Hi, welcome to a quick introduction on how to use Multisim to build a simple transistor circuit. What you see in the video window is the default screen for Multisim. What we're going to do is we're going to place individual components and build a simple five component transistor circuit and then on the next video we'll show you how to analyze that circuit. What circuit do we want to build? Here you see the circuit that we're going to build. It's a simple um, NPN transistor. It happens to be a type 3094 transistor. We'll get to that in a minute. And it has four resistors that bias it. R1, R2, a collector resistor, and an emitter resistor. And the values are shown right here. Let's first of all put the transistor in and four resistors with values of 91 and 27 kilo ohms, 5.1 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms, and we'll also set some grounds and set the beta value of the transistor. It's really easy to place a component in multisim. You simply come over to the place and then choose component, and then you get a window that looks like this that says what type of component do I want to put in. If I click on the group over here, you'll see one of the selections is transistors. That brings up a long list of possible transistors. To make it easy, I've already selected the 2N3904 transistor we're going to use for this assignment. And all I do is I click OK. It's going to give me a little transistor symbol, and I'm going to click wherever I want it on my schematic diagram. Notice this window pops up again because it thinks I'm going to place another component. I don't want to do that right now, so I'm going to hit close. Now in the video screen I've got right here, this transistor is a little bit hard to see because I have to limit the size of the video. If you want to zoom in, you can come over here to the standard plus and minus magnifying glass symbols, and let's just zoom in a little bit on the transistor. We can also use the scroll bars to center our transistor right on the middle of the screen where we can design things. If we go back and look at the schematic we're supposed to be building, we see we need four resistors, as I've already talked about. I've highlighted those in yellow right here. So let's go ahead and add a 91, a 27, a 5.1K, and a 2K resistor. Let's now go ahead and place some resistors. Again, I go back to Place and Component. Notice that instead of using the mouse, I can do Control w which I'll do from now on. When I do this, essentially I have to choose the basic group because that has things like resistors and capacitors and other things like that. And then I go down to Resistor. The first resistor let's place is going to be the 91K resistor. So I simply use the scroll bar here, dragging it up and down until I see 91K. When I do, I select it and click OK. And I put it where I want to put it. This is R1, so it's going to go over here. I'm all ready to place my next component now, which is going to be the 27K resistor. I select that, I click OK, and it goes down here. We're ready to do the 5.1K resistor right now. Let's scroll up until I find something that looks like 5.1K. Click OK. Place the collector resistor up there. And finally, last of all, we have the 2K resistor, which I can find here. Click OK. And place it down below as the emitter resistor. When I'm done, I hit close. So I'm going to pop up the schematic in a minute, but I've got a couple problems with this. I've got my transistor, which is the right type of transistor, but my resistors aren't facing the right direction and they're not named correctly. You can see if I look at sch my schematic, R1 is 91K and R2 is 27K, RC is 5.1K and RE is 2K, but you'll notice that what's happened here is that instead of being called RC, it's called R3, instead of RE, Multisim has called it R4. Also, I want these resistors to be vertical. These problems are pretty easy to take care of. If I want to rotate a component, I simply click the component until I see the dashed box around it, go to Edit, scroll down to Orientation, and I can rotate it 90 degree clockwise, notice with the Control R. So there we go. I'm all set to go. Now I'll just use Control R to rotate my other components, like that. If I want to change a component, all I have to do is double click on it. So let's change R3 to RC. If I double click on the resistor, it opens up a box. Notice this sets the value, so I want to go over to the label and change RC, R3, excuse me, to be RC. I click OK, and I can also do the same thing over here, changing R4 to RE. This is starting to look a lot more like the circuit that we were given. Now, in order to connect things, if I want to connect two components together, I just drag one and put it on top of the other until the red dot appears. Notice I've just joined the wires and I know they're connected when that red dot appears. Let's do the same thing for the emitter resistor. We just drag 
and place. Now this is going to be a little bit problematic for R1 because if I put it over here and connect it to the base, my schematic is going to get really crowded. So let's just leave it lined up with R2 and now I use the wiring tool. If I move my cursor over the base wire, you'll notice it changes from an arrow into a little black dot. That means I'm wiring. I click on where I want the wire to come from and then click again and see the red dot on where I want the wire to go to and the components are connected. I can also connect R2 to any junction and any other wire. We've wired this up now. Everything's all set. If I don't like the way this looks, I can simply drag my components and the wires will reshape themselves. The only other thing we need to do at this point is add the voltage and the ground. Again, I'll go Control w to place a component, but instead of basic, let's go over to the sources group. Let's place grounds by selecting that symbol. There's the little ground triangle. I'll click OK. We'll need one here on this resistor, and we'll add one more and put it on that re emitter resistor to connect both of those to ground. If I click close, you can see my schematic starting to look very much like what I would expect. Let's show you the schematic here for just a second. Here we go. I've got my grounds connected. Now all I need to do is connect to VCC, which is the supply voltage, and in this case VCC is going to be 12 volts. So let's do that next. Again, this is really straightforward. Control W brings up the place. I'm on sources. I select VCC. I click OK. and I can put my VCC right up there and click close since I don't need to place any more components. Instead of 12 volts, this came in right here at 5 volts. Double click it, change the value from 5 to 12 to get a 12 volt source, and I'm good to go. Now all I have to do is wire my last two wires up to VCC. This one goes there, and we'll just connect this one over there. And voila, I have the circuit that I was given in the schematic. I have one thing left to do. If you look at the schematic, um, for this transistor, I need to set beta F equal to 150. And right now I have no idea what the beta of the transistor I put in there is. So let's see how to change that. As you might expect, you change the parameters by double clicking on the component. We pop up a box. Now, notice that in the value tab, I see something called edit model. Beta is a property of a physical transistor that is actually depends on how the transistor is fabricated. And we model the transistor by using a numerical value of beta. So I'm going to edit the model, and I get a whole bunch of different pr transistor parameters I can change here. There's a very long list. It turns out that the ideal maximum forward beta is the one I want, and right now it's set to 416.4. If I click there, I can change that value to 150, and then go down and click on Change Component and say OK. And now I've set the beta of this transistor to be what I need it to be. What's the next step? Let's look at our assignment. What our assignment asks us to do is to record the values for each of the node voltages and for IC in this case. In other words, IC, the collector current. And we'll need to include them in a data table later. So how do I find these values once I've set up this circuit? Let's go back to Multisim. What you'll see in Multisim, either on essentially the Simulate tab, the Tools tab, but more importantly over here on the right side of the screen is a whole bunch of virtual instruments. What we want to use in this case, essentially, is a measurement probe. That'll tell us what voltage and current values are at any nodes. And notice I've got basically uh, five nodes in the circuit. One node here, VCC, I know what that is. Another node here, that connects R1, R2 in the base of the transistor. Another node over here where RC connects to the collector. Another node where RE collects to the, connects to the emitter. And then of course my final node is ground that I know is going to be at zero volts. To do that I come over here and I click and I get this little yellow thing. It's going to light up. You'll see that little gray dot appear. And I'm going to click right there. And that gives me a probe. And this little yellow box tells me the information about that node. Let's do this for the other two nodes. We'll put one there, drag that probe over there, and let's put a third probe on at the base, right there, and drag that down there. I paused there for just a minute and blew things up a little bit by zooming in and making the font a little bit bigger in the probes, um, because it was going to be hard to see in the video. But what you have essentially is that you have the three probes, probe one, probe two, probe three, I put in at the nodes, and when I pl hit the play button, that's the green button here, or I can go to simulate run, either one, watch what happens. The simulation is now running, 
once it stabilizes I can stop it. And notice that at this point it gives me the voltage and the current at each of these three locations in the circuit. So a really cool thing about multi-SIM is you can look at voltage and current values at every point in the circuit. We'll see later on how you can get things like peak-to-peak -peak and RMS voltage out as well. This is a good place to stop. We'll look at how we change parameters of the transistor beta and simulate that in the next video.